going to introduce my buddy and good friend Chris Nielsen. And he's going to talk to us about growing up in our beautiful city of Hollywood. I've been here since I'm three. So I remember a lot of it as well. So come on. Okay, thanks. Yay! All right. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. My name is Chris, and uh, my last name is Nielsen, N-E-I-L-S-O-N, and I'm a Hollywood native. It's so nice to be here today, uh, and there's no place I'd rather be than right here, right now. First and foremost, to recognize my friend Tim McVeigh, who helped me put this together. Tim, come up here. How long do we work on this? Six months? <laughs> God bless you. I'm going to present to you uh, a membership to the Hollywood Historical Society. Thank you. This guy's the brain behind the operation here, really. I could do this PowerPoint myself. So uh, anyways, yeah, it's so, it's so nice to be here. I think we're gonna do, I have a, a video. You'll enjoy that. We're gonna listen to some music, watch some videos, five or, five or eight minutes. Then after that, we'll do the PowerPoint, okay? So let's start the video, hit the lights, and uh, let me get this thing going here. <laughs> If anybody's in this, let me know. Okay, my brothers are the ones on top of the, uh, the slide there, Brad and Craig. That's a Brad's birthday party. Probably uh, early 50s here in Hollywood. Serious seesaws, huh? <laughs> I'm not in there. My brother Brad in the middle there with the dark slack sign. He was probably maybe seven, eight. That's when kids played, right? Nice birthday party, huh? Down at the old Hollywood PBA Hall down on Pembroke Road and Dixie Highway, they had some amusements down there. You'll see a train coming up soon. If you look closely, you'll see the wall of a big train coming behind it just momentarily. My grandma.
Watch out, 20. About 16 miles this side of Mississippi. Ooh. I just passed another Kojak with a Kodak. His place is probably a man. Where the hell are you? I'm back. I'm still trying to get rid of that Texas County Mountain. <laughs> Early 50s. Early, early 1950s, uh, down at the Hollywood PBA Hall, they had an amusement park down there. Pembroke Road and Dixie Highway. Bank Robert. Bank Robert. It's <laughs> my grandma on the back. There's a train. There's a train behind it. Real train. <laughs> I'd like to have one of those now. <laughs> Then here we go, this is my mother and I, that's me as a baby, 1955 Chevy coming home. Look, she's trying to tip her. <laughs> Aww. I'm close to nine pounds. It'll be on the uh, story of life coming up. And this is almost over. You see, this is 2123 Roosevelt Street. Look at the cat. That cat freaked me out. <laughs> that's my brother Brad. I think that's my uncle with him. And look at him, little car, he's got a radio control car. This, don't forget, I was born December 29th, 1954. So, this is what they played with back then, right after, right after Christmas. Now he's got the Howdy Doody doll. <laughs> That's Brad with the Howdy Doody. And Mom, she's getting pretty tired about now, I think. That's our dog Midnight, and it's about time she's going to sit down and take a break, so how's that? Okay, that's a, that's a video, how about that? Thank you, so uh, now we're going to get into this PowerPoint. I've got Bill Fritz here, the uh, manager of the for the uh, Sterling Road Library. Thank you very much for your help, Bill, and for letting us put this on here. That's great. This is a free presentation, you know, uh, from the Historical Society, so uh, we're doing the best we can. No one's getting paid here. Okay, so now we're gonna get into the PowerPoint. If we can make the transition here, I think we can. Now, uh, let's see here. You, you can leave the lights off. Leave the lights off, please. Can we have the lights on for the no, video? No, no. That's it okay. All. Well, I'll give it to you later, because it's not gonna work. They're kind of light things, so you have to have the lights down. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Okay. So we're going to advance it here. Okay. So here we go. Overture. Remember that when you went to the movies, they had overtures. We're going to we're going to have one here in a minute if I can find it. <laughs> okay. Here we go. So come with me on a journey. Who knows who sung that? Doris Day. Doris Day, who said that? Very good. 
You're correct. How many people here uh, grew up in Hollywood? Raise your hand. Look at that. Wow. Fantastic. Good to see you all here. Great place, huh? Okay, so uh, let me advance this to the next uh, slide. And just to give you an idea of kind of the perspective, welcome to CNN, Chris Nielsen News. Um, <laughs> here we are up at the, uh, the World Headquarters. And uh, what we're going to do is, uh, there is an Easter bunny. Uh, he's coming. <laughs> That's, can you imagine seeing that when you were a kid? You'd be scared to death. That was my, uh, my uh, cousin, Paris, and uh, the Easter bunny. Okay, so I'm going to pause this and turn this down. Okay. Now, okay, now just to give you a perspective of kind of how we think, uh, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water, uh, <laughs> this, <laughs> how about those bathing suits, huh? I mean, icons of fashion here. Uh, uh, <laughs> this is in the 1920s here, folks, so imagine what it's like here. Uh, Okay, so Joseph Young, uh, God bless him, 1883 to 1934, he came here. I, I read that, and I don't know if this is true or not, but I, I read that he, he made money in prospecting, and he came here to build the city beautiful. Whether he did or didn't doesn't matter. The point is, is that he came here, and, and this is his mansion, 1920s, 23-room mansion, still here today, 1055 Hollywood Boulevard. He died in the library there, 1934, February 26th. Young man, you know, and I guess Hollywood's pretty much the same as any community, uh, the tale of two cities, you know, the good times, bad times, and uh, he came here and built this city, and then he had this horrible hurricane in 1926, and then, uh, I mean, you had the uh, stock market crash in 1929, and he's getting things back together, and then he dies in 34, so that's what happens. The, uh, <laughs> this is my backyard, where it says paradise, that's actually the sink out of his house. So we've got everything, including the kitchen sink here. Um, they remodeled it, and they were going to put it out, and I stopped to talk to the contractor, and he said I could have it. It's actually dated underneath it in the 1920s, so that's pretty cool. If you don't like what I say, these guys will pay you a visit later on, okay? And uh, a lot of these guys came down here back in the 20s, along with these guys from up north, they'd come down here and visit us. Uh, welcome to Mountain Crossings. If one advances confidently in the direction of his dreams, and endeavors to live the life he has imagined. He will meet with success unexpected in common hours. He will pass an invisible boundary. Wow, how cool is that? New universal and more liberal laws will begin to establish themselves around and within him, and he will live life with the license of a higher order of beings. And you know, Thoreau was really, he had it together. Imagine walking out in the woods back then, no, no iPhones, no TVs, none of this stuff, and he saw it, he got it. We saw that up at uh, Conway or Blood Mountain on the Appalachian Trail, I saw that, I took a picture, I couldn't resist. So I think that life, and we're talking about growing up in Hollywood, and, and actually Hollywood growing up as well. And Thomas Cole is a great painter. We saw these in the Smithsonian Institution at the National Gallery of Art. And this guy, these are, imagine four of these. They're probably three feet by four feet. They're huge, they're oil paintings. And Thomas Cole did these, and this is the voyage of life, and there's a whole story of them. You can go on the internet and look at it. But here he is coming out of the mountain. If you notice, the baby's there. There's a, an hourglass on the ship, on the boat. You can't see it so well here. He's got his dreams like Joe Young of, you know, castles in the sky. This is youth. He, he knows there's four stages, you know. In the, now we're in youth. He's going down the river of life. Things are pretty good. He's standing tall and proud. Uh, he gets into manhood. How about that? We've all been there, huh? <laughs> Wow. And when you go there, you're standing, you're standing, they have four of these on easels and you're in the middle of them. And it just is incredible to experience this. If they still have that display, I'd highly recommend it. Uh, the next one is old age. And here he goes. The, you notice the hourglass and the bow of the ship is the bow of the boat is missing. The angels are in the sky taking him. He's made it to the sea. So that's what kind of happens in life. So here we go. Uh, this is 19, this is and this is amazing, okay, this was 19, what, 25th, 1919, February 25th. They're up in Tomoka coming down here and to kind of voyage of life, right, making a transition, coming out on the river here, kind of up towards Daytona, North Florida. And this, this postcard underneath it is a St. George Hotel. I made a mistake, I do have the postcard, but what's so fascinating is it actually talks about Johnny brought me here, we stayed here like the night of January 22nd, 1922, and it shows how we brought the sedan, how they got here, you know, where they came from, and this is the electric lights, look at this, electric lights, wow, steam heat throughout, 
uh, unexcelled cuisine and comforts without extravagance. Only open November to May. So there you go, they have steamed heat. Now, here they stayed here all night. These folks are coming down. And I found these cards on the internet, I've been collecting them for a while, in different places, which was fascinating because to assemble them all together to me was just really a, a, a stroke of luck. Uh, stayed here all night, April 9th, 1923. So these folks were up in the, uh, the Carolinas. I talked to one of the persons I acquired some of them from, and uh, they said they were in the Carolinas. They were in an old scrapbook falling apart. Uh, wrote through here January 21st, 1925. So now they're coming down here, someplace probably up, I don't know where this is, along the coast someplace in Florida here. Now, get this, here they arrive at the depot in Hollywood, January 22nd, 1925. These same folks, right? She, she did this as a pictorial, like, uh, history of her vacation, and these cards were scattered to the four winds. What, what's the chance of finding them? Now, here they are, check this one out. The writing's the same, they ate here, look how she spelled eight, A-I-T, ate here, January 22nd, 1925. Amazing. So that's the, the same time they came, they arrived at the depot. This is the Hollywood Golf and Country Club. And look at this floor. Beautiful colored lights came up through that floor. And they had a retractable roof that would cover the, the roof when they needed it. Here we go. Now, they stayed here, the Hollywood Hotel. This is down on Young Circle. It's no longer there. They changed names many times. They stayed here January 22nd 19, and 23rd, 1925. So these, these, here's the old buses here, the old cars. This is on the east side of Young Circle where the Publix was that's recently been converted. Uh, Walgreens was there. Now they're going back home. They must have been here a week or two. Passed here January 31st, 1925. Now I just thought that was pretty cool, you know, to see what people did. Wow. And when I was a kid, you could find me in the moonlight, you know, by, by following the, uh, the orange peels because we didn't have fences back then. And, and we had a lot of oranges. <laughs> we had navels and tangelos and temples. And it was great. These folks came down here to Florida. Look at Stingray. It's a Stingray. Look how they used to dress. And uh, this was probably, you know, in the night, early 1900s. So now a friend of mine gave me this. He's no long, longer here. But if you can read it, it says, a wise man travels light. On the road of life. Wisdom is his map, wonder his friend. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's, t it's okay to laugh, it's okay to cry. You know, it's a, a joy shared is double that a sorrow shared is halved, and, and this is emotional, so. Down by, I think, Sheridan Street. Look at those colors. We have fascinating sunsets here. I have a picture of one up here that a local artist drew in his backyard on Washington Street here. But look at these colors. You know, it's just beautiful coming up here. The old linen postcards. Where was the Eventide? Does anybody know? Is, is that a, a, an old property they had here? I, I don't really know where it was. But just look at the sunset. My aunt used to say, we don't have mountains, but we have clouds and we have sunsets. We sure do. Check this out. So this was uh, an advertising brochure of the photograph I showed you, uh, the postcard I showed you a minute ago. It even documents the fact that they have the uh, fully retractable open air roof. And this was the um, Hollywood Golf Club across from where Dad Little's house built his house. So I, I know back uh, 25 years, 26 years ago, when I was with the uh, Attorney General's office, uh, you know, I decided to become a life member. They don't offer that now, but uh, maybe they should revisit that uh, to help raise some funds it's up to their board. I'm not on the board, but I thought it was a nice thing at the time, and uh, it's good to support these organizations, and I thought it was worthy to do that. Oh, yeah, so, so you know, how did I get here? You know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, <laughs> My mouth is getting dry. So in 1240, a manor house was built in a site of Summer Layton Hall. This is in England, but if, uh, Sir Peter Fitzalbert, uh, and whose daughter married into the Jernigan family. The Jernigan family, uh, the male line of the Fitzbergs ended, and they held it until 1604. So this was some information that I received from ancestors of the Jernigans my, on my paternal side, 
My father's father was Niels Nielsen. He came from Norway, and they uh, he married the Jernigans, and the Jernigan family was my grandmother, my paternal grandmother. And this we were able to trace this back like 26 generations or something. I don't can believe it. Now, this was purportedly my great 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 grandfather, Count John Battista Biffy from Italy. And he was a count, and he ran uh, Milan and uh, Cremona in northern Italy in the 1700s. My, that's my understanding. He was on my maternal side. Uh, so what happened was the aristocracy in northern Italy uh, ended. Uh, he basically ruled over uh, Milan and Cremona. It was coming to an end. His descendants moved to the Isle of Man, which is kind of off of England there, and where my great-great-great-grandfather, and I've got documentation of that, uh, actually died. Um, my great-great-grandfather then migrated to New York in the late 1800s and formed one of the largest roofing companies in Brooklyn. And this is tragic here. On New Year's Eve in Brooklyn, 1904, his son, who had served in the Spanish-American War, who was my great-grandfather and was a New York fireman, of all things, it was a very cold night, so cold the gas pipes froze, silently extinguishing the lights in the middle of the night, and the gas, which was colorless and odorless, they don't have mustard in it like they do today, began flowing again after a while, and while the lights were out and not burning, the gas quietly killed him. He was 24 years old. Wow. So that just one thing changed everything. So his wife, my great-grandmother, later remarried to Otto Fix. And guess what he did? He was a car mechanic. Auto Fix. You can't make this up, right? <laughs> he fixed auto. Crazy stuff. You know? And so, so then, so here we go. We got the, uh, in the 1920s, uh, they were roaring, and my maternal great-grandfather, Otto Fix, came to Hollywood from Brooklyn. So if my other great-grandfather, Charles Rosie Biffy, didn't die of gas, I probably wouldn't even be here now. I'd be someplace else. He came down here. He was interested in the orange groves. He helped open the orange mill. And there was a huge building boom in his paradise wilderness and a need for mechanics. So, and I was told that he had won the orange groves in a card game one night, only to lose it later. I wish you would have kept him. I'll tell you that. That would have been nice, huh? Okay. This was a marriage certificate. It's old, 1899, from my great-grandma to Biffy. That's what they used to look like, and they had all the information on it. Uh, here is the death certificate. It shows even then they made mistakes. It says he was interned in Greenwood Cemetery on January 2nd, 1904. Uh, that was actually a mistake. It should have said 1905. He died the morning of New Year's Eve. It wasn't New Year's Eve. Overnight into that day, December 31st, asphyxiation by gas. So that's what happened. So anyways. My great grandma, my grandmother uh, Dolores Johnston, then uh, served in the American Red Cross. Uh, that when Woodrow Wilson was the president of the United States, 1917 and 18, had a war at that time. Remember, um, here's my grandfather, and her. Look at him. He's always smoking. That damn guy. He died of lung cancer. I could choke him for that. You know, it's just really the way it goes. But he smoked all the time. He died at 72. Wonderful man. He basically raised me. Uh, this is 1918. So here they are, 1919. They're making some decisions. Here's Hollywood Central School, uh, 1920s. And you can see all the people there. I wish you could zoom in on it, but all the people in different classes are there, and there's nothing around. This is over here in the area of uh, Federal Highway and uh, like Madison Street, Monroe Street. That's all developed now. That's gone. Here's another picture, 1924. And uh, they're just talking about how great it was down here. Uh, when they came here, they trying to find these old ones. With, I like to get postcards that have dates and some sentiment on them, right? So these are the old tour buses. These were hard to get pictures of. 1925, on the back is marked 1925. And Young was a marketing genius. He had all these tour buses taking people around and showing them around. And these were a couple of them here in Hollywood then. Here's the uh, Hollywood Hotel, back on Young Circle again. Had a wonderful time. Uh, and here they are. This is 1925. Here's the Hollywood Hotel in 26. Let's see here. This is uh, kind of hard to, to read some of it. Yeah, the new $3 million hotel on the beaches. This is $3 million he spent to build that hotel. This is February 26, 1926. That's Otto Fix. <laughs> there he is. Hey, Otto. All right. Here, now, this is 1927 with my, my uh, uh, Uncle Charlie and the chaffs of the handcuffs and my mother and her baby carriage. This is up in Hempstead, Long Island, right before they moved down here in the 30s. Uh, here they are again. Uh, he was a dapper guy who was older than her. And uh, that's him on his bicycle, that Ranger. This is up in uh, 1931, probably in the Hempstead, shortly before they came down. Here's the Hollywood Hotel main dining room. 
and uh, it was uh, opulent. You could see, uh, it was actually, this is the Hollywood Hotel on Hollywood Beach, because in the bottom it says Hollywood Beach Hotel, and this was that hotel. They called them both, they got them confused, so they had to change the names later on. Here's just something about the sky is ever bluest, and the friendships are the truest. You get the idea, they had some poems they wrote about it. I have a lot to cover, so I'll skip through some of this. Here it is 1936, that's what it looked like then. <coughs> Here's downtown post-prohibition, uh, which was from 1920s to 1933. And this is downtown Hollywood Boulevard. I've got the Schlitz sign up, so you know it's legal then. Uh, there's Grandpa Biffy. Hey, how you doing, buddy? <laughs> Look at that car. <laughs> wow. I wish I had that car, huh? Look at that. That's pretty cool. What do they call it, Connie? A lead sled or something? Yeah, they call it lead sleds. Look at all the palm, we had a lot of palm trees here, and you know, what happened was they, uh, they all died of lethal yellow. So there's grandma and there's deer. Um, this is over 2310 Madison Street in the 1930s when they came here. And what a neat little house that is, again, uh, where they kind of grew up for a while. These marbles here, they're on the table. Mom was coming down with, with them in the 1935 in, in the car, and they were in North Carolina. She was playing with the marbles, and they fell all over the road. Well, they wanted to get here because a hurricane was coming, the Labor Day storm of 1935 or th whenever it was down in the Keys, and my grandfather was just livid because they had to stop and pick up all these damn marbles on the street. <laughs> but here they are, they got them, we still have them, they're up here on the, up here on the table. Uh, here's mom, 1938, a pretty woman, too bad uh, you know, it's got a crease in the middle where it's got a tear down it, but that's at um, the Madison Street address. And they went down to the Key West Aquarium, I wasn't sure positively where that was until I did some research, but that is a Key West Aquarium. You can see the lighthouse through it in the background, and that's the same facade they had 1930s, 40s, uh, when they went down there from here. You can imagine, no air conditioning. I grew up without air conditioning, and that was hot back then. Uh, Key West, here we go, same time. There's my grandmother putting some makeup on, and uh, just when you thought it was safe to go back in the water. <laughs> it was my, my grandfather here. Uh, Checking things out, he's got a smile on his face. You can see all the, all the trees, we had all these palm trees on Hollywood Beach, it was beautiful. Um, there's my grandmother Nielsen and my great-grandmother. I grew up in a house, a 1927 house, it's over 1640 Jefferson Street, it's two stories or four generations under one roof. My great-grandmother, my mother, my grandmother and grandfather, and myself, so it was pretty interesting growing up under that. Uh, here is the 1939 South Broward High School. Uh, there's Jake Watson, Jake Watson there, and here, there's uh, my Uncle Charlie Biffy right up top there. And uh, he was older than mom, graduated there. Here he is on Hollywood Beach uh, with my Aunt Betty, and uh, Betty Vroon. Uh, she was a, a journalist for the uh, Fort Lauderdale newspaper, back then a social columnist. Uh, here, here's my Uncle Charlie uh, with the lifeguards there, kidding around. There's a lifeguard stand behind him. Look at the old bathing suits. This is Riverside Military Academy, and this is amazing, it is gone now, it's where Presidential Circle is. This, uh, they say this is the largest prep school in the United States, wow! Imagine that, right here, and as good as West Point, 51 pieces playing, and they played on Sundays, you could go hear them. This is from 1940, so that was, that was a beautiful place, I'm sad they took it down, but things change. This is the uh, Hollywood Beach Hotel. When we were kids, uh, they had these jetties. You see the jetties here? And they came, extended out into the water. And look at the old border box. See how it was kind of elevated and the jetties held to stand in place? And we used to swim out to the end of these. There used to be giant barracudas out there. I mean, it was pretty neat uh, when we were kids. Yeah, at the end they'd look at you with that big eye and those teeth sticking out and they'd be five foot barracudas out there. It was trippy. Uh, here's, here's my Uncle Charlie Biffy. He was in the uh, U.S. Air Force Cadet. 1943 up in Minnesota. Um, here's my uh, grandfather with him. This is the municipal outdoor pool at the beach. And this was the old uh, 1941 picture. This was what we called Flamingo Pool. It was 13 feet deep. It had a drainage fill into the ocean. And I learned how to scuba dive there when I was 12. And it was really hard because we had to swim to the bottom with nothing. And trying to swim in salt water is harder than fresh water because it's buoyant, right? and you'd have to find the tank and put it on, and, and then you'd uh, have to clear it, find the mask, put it on, clear it, surface, and then go back down, take it off, and repeat it. And that was our test, so it was pretty interesting. 
Uh, it cost a quarter to go in there. Uh, this was the Hollywood Kennel Club here in 1942. And uh, people found it interesting when they had dog racing. They just had a change in the law on that, you know, changing all that. Uh, we used to go to dog races sometimes. My great-grandmother loved it. Oh, she loved betting on those dogs. And look at, it, look at these guys, huh? This is pretty cool. Beautiful down here, people are saying. This is uh, some of the postcards. And look at this here. This is Pembroke Road and Dixie Hot. Pembroke Road and US 1. And look at the, nothing there, nothing. This is what it was an aerial view back then. Oh, this, I love this. Now this was the old entrance to the old Hollywood Bridge. I used to catch more fish down there. And uh, they changed it. They killed the Hollywood Beach Hotel when they put that new bridge in. They just killed it. It, it was a straight shot. This is looking out from the front of the hotel west on the Hollywood Boulevard. It was beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Um, can't quite see here. Okay, it's heading for the okay. This basically was main, mainly just to show you 1943. A moon, all the moons we have here are beautiful. This I think is Billy's Restaurant now in Hollywood Beach. This old building still there. And this is the Hollywood Beach Hotel. And uh, you can see the old ships there by the Yacht Basin. Another, another shot from the hotel looking out. This goes into, notice a post stamp, 1943, address Navy, because the Hollywood Beach Hotel housed the naval people, and they had their own postmark. Uh, this is amazing. Just to let you know, I'm finished and uh, stationed here in Hollywood, passed through Daytona, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so here's one here. Uh, look at that hotel. Dear Maggie, got your letter. Um, she's, uh, what a place to work, huh? Nothing but the best. And this is, uh, again, in the 40s. Uh, look at the reflections on that water. The water here used to be so crystal clear before they, they poisoned it with all these uh, fertilizers and all the things that they've dumped into the water. You could see the fish in there. It was so clear. And look at the reflections on there. That's what it was like when I was a kid. It was beautiful. They, they, they just killed it. Uh, okay. 1945. That reflection's amazing, isn't it? All undeveloped. Look to the west. This is the Hollywood Beach Hotel, and you can see all the vacant land there, all around there. Uh, that's, that's North Lake. You can see the keyhole going back in there. And uh, look at Hollywood Beach. I mean, there's nothing there. This is a Hollywood Beach Hotel up here. And uh, these are all just locks and undeveloped. Pretty cool. Hollywood Beach aerial shot photograph, 1948. And you can see there's nothing here. Just some, some buildings, not too much. Okay, Beach, uh, Beach Serene, kind of nice there. I like the old linen postcards. How about, I'd like to do that. Wouldn't that be fun, riding on that wakeboard? And, and this here is from the Hollywood Beach Hotel night in the Navy, and she, hi toots, toots, and she, <laughs> she was a, a wave, but she didn't have time to do this. She wanted to, she didn't get to do it either. You can see the old uh, jetties here. The boardwalk, we had swings. We had beautiful swings on the beach. It was so much fun, I wish they'd put them back. Uh, all the way down, you could swing and just see, just see the ocean here, swing on those swings, it was so nice. They're gone. Shuffleboard, anybody ever play shuffleboard? We used to play a lot of shuffleboard, that was a lot of fun. You know, that's the kind of stuff we did. We, we didn't need a lot. This is an old book cover from Hollywood. Uh, here's where I fell asleep. I hope I'm not putting you to sleep, okay. Uh, Okay. This, this is amazing. This was my stepfather. My mom remarried after dad left when I was two, and she married a guy named Casper, and that was his father. He was, a, he was actually a dentist down in, uh, in Dade County. He actually uh, had, uh, his father had Al Capone come in one time. He had to treat him, because uh, you know, he died in Palm Isle down there. And uh, he was an air raid warden. We had those here, because we had German submarines off the coast here uh, in World War II in, in that time. So th this was, he was actually a defense counsel of Dade County Civil Defense. You see the CD up there, and that's what he had, air raid warden. Downtown Hollywood, Ritz Theater. It's out of mom's notebook, 1943. She had a crush on this guy, Robinson. I don't know, anybody know who he is, Robinson? Robinson? He worked there evidently someplace, at maybe the Rainbow or someplace. Uh, here he is again. I could see why, huh? She liked him. He was pretty fit. Uh, Garfield's uh, Street by Paddleball Courts, 1943. They played paddleball back then. Pretty cool, huh? A lot of that. Still, they're still playing paddleball. I played paddleball. How about this? Beach golf, 10, uh, 18 holes, 10 cents, 1943. She marked it legs. I could see all these legs here. There's legs here. There's legs here. There's legs here. There's legs everywhere. She's t having fun taking that picture. This is the old high school in Hollywood. Uh, I'm not sure if that's, Joan, do you know, is that, is that in Dania? That's Hollywood Central. 
Hollywood yeah. Central? Yeah. Oh, okay, Hollywood Central. And then uh, here's, uh, this is kind of neat, a garden, garden Islands of the Great East by David Fairchild. He traveled the world to the Far East and brought back seed specimens to the a beautiful Fairchild Tropical Garden down at Coral Gables. If you've never been there, go. And he wrote this book, and if you notice what it says at the top right, kind of hard to see, to the Hollywood Garden Club. And he presented this in Coconut Grove in 1943 to the Hollywood, uh, Hollywood Garden Club. And amazing, I got a signed copy. It's up here on the table. Uh, and down here, it talks about wartime printing requirements, right in here, where you had to have special paper, that's why I don't like a lot of people handling it because it's kind of fragile, but it's all wartime paper. Uh, and that's why I made these pictures here so you could see them up close. Uh, okay, this is uh, 1935, the old city hall um, going on here. Now someone liked it enough where they marked the old post office here. This is looking west from Young Circle down Hollywood Boulevard from the west side. This was city hall all the way down, I just showed you. This was where the post office was. And they always have these beautiful flowers there. This was my back backyard here. <laughs> the Great Southern Hotel. Well, yeah, this was the uh, no, the Great Southern's over over here. Uh, this was the uh, Park Park Hotel, the old Hollywood Hotel. They renamed it, and uh, that's been changed since then. But this was so beautiful because this was our whole backyard. I mean, we're having a great time. Can't tell you. Uh, some of the things are pretty interesting on these these writings, but uh, I don't want to bore you. Hollywood uh, Country Club. I like this one. 1939, having a great time. Went to see High Lie Game in North Miami last night. Uh, very interesting. Then he says, get this, Hollywood is entertaining the guests by putting on the fiesta tonight, the parade, Fiesta Tropical. That was 1939, so those people appreciated it. Here's documentation of it. What are the chances of finding that? February 1939, how much the guests enjoyed that. Okay, Parkview Hotel, which again changed names from the Hollywood Hotel at Young Circle, uh, home until yesterday, and this is another one. Look at the, uh, you don't see a lot with this cupola up top here and things, it's kind of hard to see that, but it was a beautiful property. Here it is, they called it the Hollywood Inn. Uh, that's from the other side, I think. And uh, they changed names a few times to get it straight. I love this, they used to have the sign here, Hollywood by the Sea, that was our moniker. What did I, look at all the flowers, and it was like that here. Flowers everywhere. Here's the old Hollywood Bank and Post Office. That's pretty cool. And then, uh, here it is again, somebody wanted to see it. It's still here, it's still down there. It's on the uh, northwest corner of, uh, what, 20th and Hollywood Boulevard? It's the SunTrust building now, right? Southeast. Yeah. Southeast building, but. Southeast corner. Yeah, no, no, it's on a, it's on a north, it's on a north, northwest corner. Northwest corner, okay. Northwest corner, okay, and here is. Uh, Let's see. Now they're leaving for Cuba. Here they are, missing you much. We're leaving for Cuba tomorrow. That's when people used to travel here to Cuba. They enjoyed that. And look at these flowers. What is this here? Hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's a circle. Looking, uh, there's a great southern right here. Right there. This, they had the memorial to the war dead, and it disappointed me when they redid Young Circle that they, they just, I don't know who in their wisdom, just destroyed that. It was a historical site. There used to be a torch there, an ever-lit torch. Uh, they had memories to the people who died in the wars, and they just demolished it. It kind of upset me. I used to play there when I was a kid. And I don't know why they did that, but I'm still not happy about that. But that's just the way things go sometimes. Um, that's the uh, Publix area on the other side over there. That was my Uncle Charlie Biffy and wife Betty Varun Biffy and daughter Priya in the late 1940s. I wonder where this building is. It's probably still here. You can see from the shape of the windows and the, the number of windows, it could probably be identified, but I'm not quite sure exactly where it was. Um, here's mom, early 40s. Uh, here they are in the 40s again. Her, they must have gone up to Georgia. This, this looks like T Tallulah Gorge to me. I'm not sure. They used to go up there in North Carolina a lot. Here she is in the early 40s again. We had orange groves back then. She worked as a telephone operator for Southern Bell, right over here on US 1 and Johnson Street. And that's the crew she worked with. She's in the middle. She's the fourth one over from the left. The building is still there. It's just south of Johnson Street on the east side, east side of uh, Federal Highway. You can see the uh, writing of Southern Bell on the, up here, telephone. 
And they were operators, they had like switchboards, they'd take the things, the cords and push them in there and all that crazy stuff. So then uh, she ended up going to Florida State Women's College in the mid 40s, which is pretty cool. So here she's, here she's growing up. These are all the, the women that she was with in college. They had a great time up there. She really enjoyed it. It was one of the best women's colleges in the country. She went for a year. And I don't think that she, she came back down here and she met my father. And uh, you know, she didn't go back, they got married. Uh, this was their Florida State College for Women, and Kelly, Kelly Hancock's here, a dear friend of mine, he's a graduate of Florida State. And this was, was a, only a woman's college, and they had a thing called the Flambeau. The Flambeau is that flame, is what it is, the everlasting flame. And here's what she wrote. They, they talked to the students. She was pretty outspoken back then. She said something about, if I, can, I can't quite see it so well, but she said, let me get my glasses on. Uh, she basically said that they had this, this thing called convocation that you had to go to. And, and it was like an institutionalized requirement, and nobody liked it. They all hated going to this thing. And she actually spoke out against it even there in her first year. Maybe that's why she didn't go back, I don't know. <laughs> she said it was a waste of time. They could be using their time better studying, and it was required to go all the time. They shouldn't do it so often. They should make it interesting, that kind of thing. So anyways, here she is on the beach, uh, having a great time here in Hollywood. This, she was in a play in a little theater. We had a great Hollywood playhouse here. Now it's owned by the church. Uh, the city um, turned it over to them. She was in a play called Arsenic and Old Lace. I went down for this presentation trying to find some pictures, but they're all gone. And, but the stage is still there. You can see I took a picture of it. Uh, some of the equipment there. There was a picture on the wall, but someone took it. I, I'd like to know where it went. Uh, 1948, she was in that play. And uh, kind of neat old building, historical. You can see all the ropes and riggings and equipment are still there. They have a balcony. This is the audience section. And uh, maybe someday they'll, they'll put that back to you. So I suggested they might want to make some, some plays during Christmas time or the holidays, you know, to, and the, the pastor was receptive to that. So maybe we'll see about doing something like that down the road. Uh, this is, again, uh, U.S. Navy. And uh, this is what it's like here. Oh, I like what he says here. It's, uh, everything is like it's advertised. There's no, no pretentiousness here, no BS. They, they said it was like this, and he's writing back to them, you know, it's just like they advertised, and it was. Here's a Hollywood Beach Hotel. Uh, another, just another picture. You can see behind it, look at all the undeveloped land behind it there. I mean, just and this guy was the, the Jewish hospital of Brooklyn. There weren't a lot of Jewish people here back then, and this was the beginning of the early influence of Jewish folks in Broward County. And I think it's really neat to have this documentation. He sent it to the doctor up there in Brooklyn, so they were evidently related. And uh, nothing was back here, all undeveloped. Al Capone, he was here. He was here. My, great, my grandfather treated him. He had an um, infection in his mouth. He had to be treated for the dentist. And my father actually took flowers down to Palm Island to the funeral on January 25th, right after that, 1947. And they, uh, the, the boys were there, and the cops were there, and everybody was there. And they, he had all these big flowers. They searched him. <laughs> they didn't want anybody putting guns or explosives in there because of all the people that would come. And, and uh, this was amazing. He was actually uh, around here. Okay, City Hall, uh, flowers year-round, and it says it on there on the postcard. And look how we should we should do this again. They should have beautiful flowers. It made our, our city beautiful. That was what Joe Young's dream was: the city beautiful. From the park to the uh, hotel, uh, this is kind of neat. They're going to ship a box of oranges. Went to the shipper, it says down here last last uh, week to ship oranges. My mother had a flower shop. You'll see it coming up, and uh, they shipped oranges everywhere. Um, I had a connection to the oranges, right? Okay. Uh, here's the uh, hotel again, 1949. They enjoyed it so much. Uh, my dad's papers to the military, so that's another thing that changed everything. So he came down here in World War II uh, and met mother, and that's why she didn't go back to college, and they had me <laughs> and my brothers. They were married in the Hollywood Women's Club, a beautiful facility there. And that's uh, over here uh, on the east side of the uh, golf course off of Johnson and Federal. And here she is before she's married. Here's her, uh, I've got this picture up here on the table. It's my uh, paternal grandmother, Maude Nielsen, uh, Jernigan. She was a Jernigan. Uh, this is my uh, paternal. This is uh, B uh, Biffy, Dolores Biffy. That's mom. That's my father, Tiny. Charles Nielsen. That's Niels Nielsen, uh, her husband, my uh, my maternal grandfather and my maternal grandfather, uh, Biffy, Charles Biffy. So uh, 1947. And that 
fabric covered up the rules of the women's club. Yeah. They're still there. If you ever go in there, you'll see there's a board up there that covered that with fabric. They put all these things in. She was a florist. They were very creative. Uh, they must have gone to Chicago in the 40s. I found this picture, but I don't really have the story behind it, but that's my dad and my mother, so maybe they went up there on some kind of honeymoon or something. Um, here they are on the beach. Uh, everybody's casual, it's cool, no air conditioning, remember? <laughs> so you do what you could. Uh, I just thought this was so sweet. I love it here. I've been in the ocean every day. Loves and kisses Brianna. A huh? little kid wrote that. I love it here, 1948, what her perspective was. Yeah, and this was our delivery wagon. They had the old Woody. That was our, our delivery wagon for the flowers. And then uh, here's my dad. He was a member of the Lions Club, my brother Craig. Uh, the address, they were at 2042 Harrison Street. And there's my brother Brad in the window there. And there they are in the car. This is probably right before I was born, because uh, they were born like late 40s. I was born early 50s. Here's their, their delivery wagon. It's pretty fun. Look at the phone number, 31555. <laughs> Flowers of Distinction, bouquet shop. I love the way they spelled shop. On the back it said, drive carefully, the next love may be for you. <laughs> <laughs> they, had a, they had a good sense of humor, didn't they? Uh, <laughs> here's the flower shop. It, this is on Harrison Street. It, it's pretty crazy. Look at I mean, all this stuff. This is like obviously around Christmas time. There's snowmen here and, and all that, and little snowmen here. And then the... The next one here, this is around Halloween. Uh, this is back when they did things creatively, the masks. The boys probably drew those and put them in the window for them, and they had all these funny decorations, and that was in vogue back then. Uh, here they are, Easter time. There is an Easter bunny, you saw them. <laughs> okay, uh, here's the military academy again. Uh, let's see here, too bad I haven't had to. Uh, there are more drinking places than telephone booths here. How about that? That's what it is. I thought that was pretty telling, 1949. More, more drinking places and telephone booths. Okay. Um, here, here's the, uh, the dorms. It's, this is how it came in. So look at this. Isn't this beautiful? This is how the old bridges flowed right into the hotel. Now they just killed it. Like I said, there's all this rigmarole going around in circles. Um, anyways, uh, I'm so happy. I have beautiful rooms, two huge dressing rooms between us, all kinds of conveniences, as good a food as I've ever eaten. How about that? And, and uh, incredible. And go back for more. I mean, they got a convention coming Saturday. These people are happy campers. So that's something. Her dorms, this is where she put the dorms we're seeing over here. That's where I remember that. I remember that. Okay. Stormproof Hotel, they're saying. Hurricane King. Well, so it says Thursday. And this is uh, Deer. And, and I looked this up. You can't see the year in the postmark, but I looked up hurricanes in Hollywood on October 18th because this is the next day. And I found Hurricane King. So I believe it's 1950. It says, uh, I stayed here at this hotel last night because they uh, they were expecting a hurricane to hit here. It wasn't bad. Well, it was pretty bad. It messed up Davy pretty bad. Uh, it, and uh, it didn't do much. Uh, this is the hotel where they said uh, uh, it's supposed to be hurricane proof or something like that, uh, storm proof down here. So it's a good thing they weren't here in 26 or whatever. Uh, that would have been a big problem. Okay, so this is mom. She was president of the Hollywood Lioness Club. Uh, they're all involved together doing these different things, and there's all kinds of interesting material here, but I won't bore you with it. But suffice it to say, it was a pretty tight little community. Uh, here is uh, Grandma Biffy with Brad Nielsen down at the beach. We spent a lot of time at the beach. Brad and Craig, they used to have sandboxes. Remember those? Did the kids still use those? And, you know, people got afraid cats and dogs got in them. But, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, they had sandboxes. This is Grandma uh, Nielsen with the kids before I was born, 1951. Florida Theater. How about that? Who remembers Florida Theater? Anybody ever go there? Yeah. You used to be able to go there, and sometimes you could take uh, like six or 12 RCA bottle caps. You'd go fish them out of the, out of the uh, different stores, and they'd let you in for free. If you had six or 12 or whatever it was, RCA bottle caps, you'd get into movies for free. And we didn't have a lot of money, so we'd have to go find these things. We'd go raid all the pop machines in town and get those caps out to go get a free movie. 1951, uh, it burned down later on. Uh, okay, apartment looking over the ocean. This is Flamingo Pool. You can see entrance here. This is Flamingo Pool. This is a beach. And uh, you can see it here. Okay, now. Swings on the beach. I sure did miss those swings on the beach. That was fun. Okay, then we have the uh, Flamingo Pool. Here's an aerial shot. So this is Johnson Street here. 
and you can see, look, there's nothing here. There's all houses and stuff in here now, but this is Holland Park in here now. It wasn't, wasn't a park then. Okay, this um, Flamingo Pool again. It had a water tower back then. That's gone now. That was over by Johnson Street. That's gone. Aerial shots are hard to find. This is an old aerial shot. Here's a Flamingo Pool. Here's a water tower. This is uh, Johnson Street right here. There's no band shell. Theater, theater under the stars. That's not there. All the palm trees, nice palm trees, coconut palm trees, before the lethal yellow killed everything. Uh, this is a new address. This just shows, I just thought that was pretty nice marketing, the colors of the clouds at this place here, the Seacrest Manor. I think, Tim, didn't your family go there before? Yeah. Yeah, Tim, Tim McVeigh uh, helped me with this. I said, oh yeah, we used to go there. Uh, what, a, what a place. Nice place. Fine dining and everything else. Oh, the moonlights. This is down, it must be down by Garfield Street. A lot of us used to go down, they had a shed there with, with gas grills. We'd go make uh, breakfast there in the morning on, on weekends, and look at the moon on the beach. This is uh, the beach hotel. They had fountains there. When I was a little boy, we used to go fishing in the fountains. <laughs> We'd take paper clips and make cooks out of them, put bread on them, and catch goldfish and throw them back in there. <laughs> so, we're cheap dates, you know? <laughs> Here's a hotel again, 1950. Oh, oh, they were so happy. That, look at this. They had a bar and refrigerator in their room. Yeah, they were really happy with that coming down here in 1952. I guess it was a big deal back then. So the, here's a family with the postcard, the Christmas cards before I was born. Mom, Dad, Brad. That's Craig. That's Brad. Um, Hollywood Beach Hotel behind them there. Dad was a big golfer. He was on the, uh, the golf commission. Oh, let me find that phone here. Okay. I don't know what happened here. Maybe. Okay. Okay, here we go. And uh, this is Christmas. Somebody had a good Christmas. I wasn't there in 1952. They had all kinds of good stuff there. They used to have them on the trees. Remember, they used to have lead, like these tinsel. Tinsel made out of like tin, so it was heavy, it conducted electricity. We used to wad it up and make like little balls out of it and throw it around, it felt like sinkers. And uh, sometimes it'd get on a train track and it would shock you because it was like electrified or to get in the electric lights. It was, they don't make it anymore. <laughs> Probably a good thing, <laughs> burn the house down, right? There's Brad on a pony. Look at that, that's a nice pony. Look at all that rigging on there, early 50s. So Dad was responsible for building the uh, additional nine-hole course at uh, Orange Brook here. It was C.M. Nielsen, my initials, but his name, Charles Martin, I'm Christopher Mark, uh, in 1956. Shortly after that, he left, he, they got divorced, he left town, and uh, uh, Mom had to remarry, and the whole thing. So that's when we moved into the house on uh, Jefferson Street, 1640. Here's Orange Brook Golf Course. I went there the other day just to take a look at it. Uh, the plaque is on the wall there. It's kind of neat to see that. The breezeway, the loan bag, representing dad's gone. And Paul, Paul Lang is here, my best friend. We used to go on this golf course, didn't we, Paul, when we were kids? <laughs> we'd get chased by the, uh, the rangers, remember them? And they'd see us, we'd go fishing there. You weren't supposed to be there, but, uh, you know, I never got caught, but I guess we'd had a pass, I don't know. But uh, this is water, there's a lot of water in that course. It's fed from the Sea Tank Canal, which comes all the way from the ocean and fed back in here. And there were some big bass in there, real big bass and some real nice uh, bluegills and all kinds of stuff. We had a lot of fun fishing in there. But when the ranger would come in that little Vespa, you'd see him in, in the distance. And we, we knew just how much time it would take to run away and go back across I-95 to my house on the other side so we wouldn't get caught. And we had a lot of fun there. Uh, you can see here's the water there again. Uh, this is the first hole. Legend has it he might have some cremains there. I don't know, I can't, can't confirm or deny that. Nineteen eighty-four. Uh, so this is when uh, they had the uh, big anniversary. And look, this is amazing because they were saying what a great place this was. I mean, look, we had we had look Hollywood Open Welcome, Sam Snead, Ben Hogan, Byron, you know, Byron Nelson. How about this? I mean, we had some serious hitters here, didn't we? This is amazing. So we got to keep this Orange Brook and preserve it and protect it. This is uh, my dad here at the microphone. Uh, you can find him right there. This is not working so well now, but. Here, go back, right, right there. Come on, this thing is not, oh, I know what it is. Okay, here we go, back one. 
this technology is not always easy to work with, folks. We've been lucky so far. This thing's even working. Okay. I wonder why it maybe got unplugged. I don't see the. Uh, hmm. Maybe the battery died here. The, the mouse is not. I'm gonna have to go to. Is, is it the mouse? There's no light on. It got unplugged. There we go. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So here's. Uh, here we are. The land was purchased. Look at this, Floyd Ray. He was the guy from the uh, the Groves, and they purchased it here, and they did the whole thing. Now, here they are talking about it. This guy was a character, Al Hines. He owned Hines Automotive. I used to work for Al. He was a city commissioner here, quite a guy. Now, does anybody know who this guy is? Is this Thompson, or who is this man here kneeling? Anybody know? Well, that's my dad with the headlight on with the ball. He's, and they used to go there at nighttime, and they used to take golf balls and cherry bombs and put them in the holes and shoot them up in the air. They invented night golf. He was crazy. <laughs> night, look at the headlamp he had on. These guys are serious, man. They go out there and use the car headlights at nighttime, and they had a hell of a lot of fun back then. Um, and they always dressed so nicely. I always thought that was pretty cool. This is our house that he built at uh, 14, I believe it was 1455, uh, Johnson Street. It's still there today. Uh, there they all are before I was born. Um, Mom, Dad, Brad and Craig at midnight. And uh, they always did pretty good. Grandpa Charles Biffy, that's my grandfather, somebody visiting him here in Hollywood in 1953. Smoking again, got his spectators on, pretty jazzy. Craig's third birthday, I'm still not here yet. Here's a birthday party. I don't know, is uh, Who's this on the table here? Anybody recognize that standing up on the table here? Is that you, Peggy? <laughs> There's uh, my brother Craig. Is that Penny? Is that Penny Johns? Could be. Huh? Could be. I think it's Penny Johns. Look at her up on the table. That makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> where's your Where's your uh, your lampshade? <laughs> okay. Anyway, and we got Brad. There's Brad, and this is the house here. Kind of neat. They had a lot of fun, right? Yeah. And we, we play with things, look at the old cars. We play with like t uh, tire tubes, you know, tubes to trucks and things. This Brad and Craig, they're having a fun time at the beach. They're just happy, happy just to have something to, to play with. Buckets, there's a house over on Johnson Street, 1455 Johnson. Dad told me when he built that house, he got from Vantage Concrete these giant piles that were like uh, giant cement uh, support poles and they were like 10 feet. He put them in, it just ate them up. They had 20 feet. They had to put. They went down like 60 feet or whatever to get secure. It was incredible what they had to do because of all the muck and things underneath these houses. This is uh, the Hollywood Yacht Basin, 1953. My grandmother, nice old vessel there, and they had trailer parks here. And, and uh, this is a trailer park. They had one down on the on the beach here in Hollywood. I got a picture of it coming up, and and it was one of the nicest things. Look at this. This is Hollywood Beach. Look at the trailer park. It was great. I used to go diving off there all the time. We'd catch a lot of lobsters and things. When I was a little boy, I'd ride my bike to the beach, and I had a little Stingray bicycle. You'll see it coming up. And I'd, I'd find these lobsters by these pilings. I was only like seven years old, eight years old, six years old, just little. And I'd throw them in the basket and take them home to my grandmother. Built in 1953, and so I was born, you'll see, um, we were in Hollywood, but I had to go up, they went up at 2.30 in the morning to Broward General because they really weren't up to snuff yet at Memorial here, and I uh, talked to Alan Paley the other day, he was also born in Broward General, uh, he's my age, uh, so here's Life Begins the Nielsen's, uh, Kelly asked how much I weighed, where was it, eight, eight pounds, 13 ounces, is that what it says, yeah. almost, almost nine pounds, this is kind of interesting title. They had all this stuff they made up. It was kind of fun. Dr. Jean Walker, a female doctor. How about that back in 54? That's pretty un unusual. And then they used 1455 Johnson Street because that's where they were building the house. A long light story. What else are they saying here? Story, sure appeal to girls. Well, I don't know, Connie, what do you think? <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, so that was kind of sweet. And here, here I am, uh, seven months right in there. <laughs> there's Craig and there's Brad. That's the, uh, I was baptized there in 1955. It's still there, First Presbyterian Church. There I'm a little boy, April 55. Ah, oh, that's kind of a neat little chair, isn't it? Okay. 
Okay, here we are. I remember that bird. Look at that little bird, July 1955, and uh, all swaddled here with the nice fabric and in the house there. And look at up. Who are you? You, you talking to me? <laughs> Anyways, that was. And look at there's nothing there. There's nothing around. Uh, here's uh, 1640 Jefferson. It's still there. Uh, this, I'm in the middle. Kind of hard to see. Uh, I'm, my head's resting on. Here I am again as mom and Brad and Craig. Uh, so there's my great grandmother, Eva Fix, the one whose husband died, who remarried Otto Fix, who came down here, and that's why we ended up here. Um, here's my other grandmother, uh, Maude Nielsen. They had a florist in Dania called Nielsen's Florist, and uh, that's her. I learned how to drive on her knees, driving a stick shift on a collar when I was just a little boy. It scared the hell out of me. And she had things under control, but she said, well, you know, you do this, you do this, you know. I was like, what? <laughs> she taught me how to drive uh, when I was very little. Okay, so here we go. Here's the beach again, a shot from the hotel. Uh, just so beautiful. And I used to ride my bike down that boulevard at night. It looked like Oz. You see this big building in the distance, right? A little stingray there, it'd be dark, and, and nobody out. The whole place to yourself. And I'd go down to the beach and come back Sheridan Street, and there'd be these land crabs everywhere. Yeah. Where these blue crabs, and they would punch your toll. It freaked me out, because they were all over. You gotta like dive around to make sure you get a flat tire. And we had a lot of those. Here we go, Moonlight over Hollywood Boulevard. Oh, it's just so beautiful. And you can still experience this, right? Go down there at night and on a full moon, and Connie and I go down sometimes and watch the full moon come up over the ocean. Beautiful to do that. The Hotel Sheldon. We used to go here, this is where we went when I was a kid. We'd always come here and, and go to the beach there. And you know why? They had, they had air conditioning. Wow, that was kind of neat. Nobody else did. They had bathrooms. You could get something cold to drink there. So it was a good reason to go. And Grandpa would bring these umbrellas and these big hammers and hammer them into the ground. And it was, we'd bring little sandwiches down there and lemonade. Here we go. Oh, the two-fisted drinker back then, huh? Look at that. 1955. Two buckets of two things. That's Hollywood Beach. We had the beautiful, beautiful outflow of sand here. This was all gone. We had beautiful sand back then. And they used to tell me, you could stand in your shoes, you're always going to come back. And... <laughs> so it was kind of fun. Here's another one. Okay. Next. There we are. Tinsel, tinsel on that tree. And uh, Brian and Craig, my first birthday. That was kind of fun. And they had this picture they did at Christmas now. So this is right before Dad left. Uh, he had the uh, golf cart across the street. He took a picture Christmas time. Hollywood Beach Country Club. Our house was right across the street. In fact, if you ever go to that house, they had the nicest view of that golf course of any place in Hollywood. If you open the windows in that little front room and look out, it's magnificent. Absolutely magnificent. Okay, here's Jefferson Street. Four generations of us lived there. That's the house. Look at that. 1927 house. Nice, nice old house. And there was no air conditioning, but you can see the screen porch. And it was elevated. And there was flow-through ventilation. They run all the hotels down at the beach block in the airflow. It was cool. It wasn't that bad. Uh, first ride in the backyard. That's my first ride. Six, <laughs> 1956. Let's go. Okay. That's the back porch. We had screen porch there, too. And you see the banana trees. And there were no fences. We didn't have fences back then. You know, nobody was fenced in. We could go where we wanted to. This is here. They're having a grand time here. This is another picture here. The Beach Hotel. Uh, baby contest, July 4th, 1956. How about that? Down in Hollywood Beach. And uh, here's the old buntings, and they have the speakers up here, and, and everybody's having their baby contest then. Okay. Swings, having fun, moving along. We did these little things, you know, you put your hand in the enamel, and they kind of toast it up, and I still have that thing. Uh, here we are, a little little wagon with a little lawnmower, fake lawnmower, 1956. I'm two years old now. Mom was a florist and she, uh, she loved flowers and she went to the, uh, all these different conventions and this was, she went to the Florida State Florist Association convention in Tampa in 1957 and they did a big feature of her for being there. She helped decorate it up there. Uh, she also loved orchids. She got a big silver trophy uh, and blue ribbon for her orchid presentation and uh, it's kind of interesting. She won those awards, I'm very proud of her. 
Uh, she loved those orchids. And it's interesting here, here they are, you know, all the beautiful orchids, people from Canada. This looks like French. Does anybody read what that says in French? Who speaks French? Who reads French? Anybody? Okay, we'll move on. Okay, here's the uh, Gulfstream, the racetrack. Go down there. And what they talked about was the orchids. Look at the, uh, the lovely orchids. Wish I could send them to you on the table. They have beautiful orchids at a table. And so mom had a piece of that. She'd deliver orchids down there and grow them. And, and here we are in the back of the house there. Uh, 1958, growing up, my little head, the old cars they had, kind of fun. And you can see the, you know, the, the flow was so nice. All these trees around here, it's just beautiful. No fences, 1958, there's mom behind the house. She decided to take a trip to Cuba. I found this, we searched this. Uh, she went down to Cuba, Havana, uh, 1958. Kind of neat, people travel there from, and you remember what happened in 1958 on New Year's Eve. Right, New Year's Eve 1958 and 1959, Batista and the revolution and, and uh, Castro took over and they had the whole thing and threw everybody out and they seized all the property. Uh, all the wise guys had their money tied up down there in casinos and hotels. Uh, so yeah, she went down there right before the revolution. Maybe she caused it, I don't know. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, there you go, enough of that. All right, Santa, hi Santa. Okay, little cowboy. Okay, here we are, Palm Manor School. I call it a cotillion. It's, you can see the band in the background. It's kind of like a little coming of age dance. There's Brad and Palm Manor had this big graduation in the 50s and they all wore these little funny little ties and all these white tuxedos and dresses. Um, I wish I had a better picture of this. This is uh, Easter Bunny, Easter Bunny. Is there a better picture? This is Easter of 1950s. That's Dale Anstein. He was a doctor here in town. And I was uh, from Molinas. You can see we had this at, uh, they had a breakfast and fashion show at the Davis Cafeteria. And this was, uh, we were modeling clothes from Molinas, Penny. Okay, right there. And uh, I wish I had a better picture, Easter Bunny. Oh, there's one. There you go. Um, Easter Bunny grants your wishes, doesn't he? There it is. So how about that? That's a better picture. And uh, that's kind of what it was like. She, she married Andy Molinari, and uh, they separated. And I think she's still around from what I hear. It'd be nice to hear from her. Andy Molinari, he's a realtor in town. Uh, but that's Margaret Anstein and little Chris. Okay. I got my first doctor of zoology, Joe, wherever he went. And I got that in uh, uh, Paul Manor uh, Elementary Preschool in uh, Doctor of Zoology, 1960. How about that? We had a lot of, <laughs> May 31st, that's Connie's birthday. But yeah, Joe, I got my Doctor of Zoology there. You know, my, my scientist friend, Joe, from Novo Oceanographic here. He's a molecular biologist, is that what you do? Yeah. yeah, so I got mine before you got yours, didn't I? Okay. <laughs> All right. So they used to have monkeys over on US-1 and Griffin Road. A lot of them got loose and they kind of ran around and there's so, some are probably still around out there someplace. Uh, but this wasn't a monkey, it's a statue there, Brad and Craig playing there. Uh, here's, here's the bikes. Uh, here I am on the bike, you can see there's three wheels on it. Those boys, they scared the hell out of me. Here I am in the middle, it's Brad and here's Craig. And they had those two wheelers and they were dragging me around like a crying stepchild on that three wheel bicycle, scaring the hell out of me, trying to teach me how to ride the bicycle because dad was gone and now they're going to be dad, right? Good luck, okay. <laughs> here's a Hollywood Yacht Base in 1957. You see, there's no houses over here. No houses over there at all. There's real nice, the old boats there. Uh, Daddy, we're spending a week here, beautiful place. Here's the yacht basin again. Uh, this is coming in. Uh, it was enough now. Wearing a sweater. Beautiful weather, people love it. I uh, note the addition, I mentioned this to Joan earlier. See this right here? There's a, a vertical window here. The roof of the hotel used to stop here. And now in 1958, I'm seeing they've added 10 feet, 15 feet, I don't know, above the here, and now there's these, these other windows up here that weren't there before. I'm not quite sure. It'd be interesting to look into that to find out when that happened, how it happened. I'd like to go up there and see what's up there. Maybe it was in, in, in the war, maybe it was observation, uh, maybe it was something else, but it's kind of interesting. Um, okay, it's not always what you we see, what you don't see, assimilate. Well, I tried to assimilate. Here it is again. Here's a picture up here. Uh, of that, those windows up there, it's like, where'd they come from? Okay, here's my brother Brad. He was uh, out there, the land crabs are coming. The crustaceans on the march in East Hollywood, there's a whole story about it, and they were all over the road and talking about them coming in. These big, big land crabs here, big old land crabs. Remember those, Ted? Yeah, okay. Hollywood Central School, 56, 57. I used to play in these porticos on, on stormy days. 
And they used to say you can count to five and see how far the storms are and you hear the thunder. And we live right down the street from there. I was sitting here and watched the rain come down and count and try to figure out you know, how far the rainstorm was. Look at this. Now, this is Hollywood Central. And there's my brother, Craig. there's Brad. There he is right there with his hands folded. And now they've got March with these books, named designs. Now, imagine, here we go. Now, this is... 1959 and 60, and now they're getting into the Vikings, talking about the Vikings and being a Viking, I kind of like that. Uh, here's uh, Craig standing up in the back with a book. And uh, if any of you are in these pictures, please tell me or shout it out or tell me afterwards. Uh, no air conditioning, I remember. No air conditioning. No, no air conditioning. Look at the big high uh, doorways and the big windows. See, they're tilted forward, and that's how they got air conditioning. Um, now we're getting into the 1961-62, so we've gone from the 50s to the 60s. Now what have we got? The space age. Rockets, huh? Look at this. It's kind of neat to see rockets they're talking about instead of Vikings and boats. They're coming forward. Uh, Craig is seated on the right in front of the teacher. Here's Craig right here. Uh, he, Craig, Craig was always wild. That's all I can say. Uh, he was a genuine badass. I mean, you know, he, he's dead now, but uh, he, he, he was tough. He was a tough guy. Okay, here's the, uh, the circle. Look at this. This is a circle, a young circle. They had some kind of staging platform here to maybe, maybe, uh, you know, judge the floats or the parades. I don't know. This is on the uh, on the west side of Young Circle, and there's nothing here when they first laid it out and put the lights in. This has got to be very old in the hotel there. Here, here's our backyard. This was like growing up. There's not a lot here. It was a lot of fun. Here it is. I love this shot here. I saw this. And, yeah. Now, this is more my, my liking here. So this is North Lake, and this is South Lake, and uh, this is over here in the West Lake area, and uh, this is the circle, and the hotel's still there. We lived over here, right over here. The school's over here. This is like Hollywood Central. Our house is over in here. Mom's house that she had on 16, uh, 1455 Johnson was on the other side of the golf course. This is the golf course, Hollywood Beach Hotel golf course. Uh, Another picture here's the, now here's the band shell. They put that in there, the, the original one. And I used to go in there a lot and play. I used to skateboard. I used to skateboard down the ramps and go underneath and be like, you know, having a lot of fun there. Okay, so here, here I am in a top row. I was kind of shy, and you can see I'm kind of smirking a little bit, you know, uncomfortable. 63, here's a class, and uh, you know, this is a Colbert now, Colbert Elementary, 63, 64. Here's a snowman in Hollywood. They used to have an ice house here, and they built this snowman there. Easter Bunny, I wish I had a better picture of this. Oh, there it is. Okay. Here's a better picture. And it's kind of neat. They built this here in, in Hollywood. That's my brother Brad with the snowball. Uh, that's John Kelly. I don't know if came with John. That's Craig. Craig's gone. There's Brad. He's in Tampa. They had a barracuda from down at, uh, down at the lake there they caught. Um, here's the Hollywood Beach Hotel. They had these, uh, the Shamrock, a little sightseeing boat here. You can see again, there's the windows up top, so it must have been later on. I used to go here with my uncle as a little boy. He took me here to the Hollywood Speedway. It's over here on Pembroke Road where Coca-Cola is now. And uh, they had stock car races there. It was a blast. I thought it was so cool. I would be five, six years old. He'd take me, buy me a Coca-Cola, and give me a flag and a little pirate flag. And we had a wonderful time. And uh, here we go. They got uh, Bobby Allison. Bobby Allison raced there in old Hollywood. And, uh, you know... Pretty, pretty interesting. It's no longer there, obviously, but that was on Pembroke Road, EM 95, uh, west of 95 on the south side. There's my mother marrying Bob Casper, 1961. He was also a florist. His dad was an air raid warden you saw before. And uh, anyways, uh, his father took care of Al Capone that time he came in. Here at our house, we had a big luau. Now, in August 1961, it was really neat because uh, there was no I-95. Can you imagine Hollywood with Broward County? No I-95, none. If we had the last house on the block. It was really cool. We could run over to Orangebrook, which is our backyard, and get chased by the Rangers, right? And catch fish. And we had a big luau there, and it was a big deal. And they were in the Florist Association. <laughs> and here's some pictures from it. This is 1961 luau. They put this plastic down in the grass out back. It was black out there, real dark, and pineapples, and all this Hawaiian food, and coconuts, and it was a good time. <laughs> Here's uh, the kids' table. That's me with the straw hat on at the kids' table over here. Uh, there's uh, everybody in town who was anybody to do with the floral industry was here. It was a big deal. Uh, 
Here they are receiving some kind of award, maybe for the Luau at the Diplomat Hotel, uh, Candelabra they presented to them. Um, so Bob Geisen owned this building. This is a flower shop. It's a massage parlor now. Uh, it's still there, and you can see it. And the, the building back here is gone. That was an apartment house that he had, and this was their fleet of vehicles. They did citrus shipping and all that. Um, in a hurricane, what, what came in, and like Hurricane Donna and Betsy and Cleo, they came here in the 60s, water would come up to this door and inside. It would come all the way east. I, I bet if we get a big storm now, it would be even worse. You know, the flooding here is not going to be good for the future Hollywood uh, in any event. Uh, here's the uh, bouquet shop again. And look at the old Corvette. There's a furniture shop down here that's gone now. And, uh, the inside, they had all kinds of things going. They did the shipping the fruit. They sold, they sold plants. There's Bob. They had a big table in there. He's in there working on an arrangement. They had all this glitter and, and ri ribbons and uh, spray. And they made all kinds of different things. Very creative. This is the back. This is the front. They plants. They sold plants. All this pottery, all these beautiful enamel little figurines, they put plants in and send them around. They did weddings, funerals, just everything a florist would do. And here I am with mom at the Central Park Zoo. She took me up there in uh, 1961, right before she got married. And then here she's got me working at the shop already, child labor. Uh, that's where she used to book for weddings at that table, at that window. And uh, that was a lot of fun back then. I love going there because you know why? It was hot here. And guess what? They were a flower shop. And what did they have? Freezers. It was cold for the flowers. I'd go in those, in those freezers and just sit in there and chill out. It was kind of nice. <laughs> These are uh, Rosemary, Huey, and Vivian Grief. They're living next to us, uh, uh, two houses down. Reverend Grief uh, was a pastor at St. John's Lutheran, and he lived uh, two houses from us on, at the end of uh, Madison Street, 1961. Um, Here's mom again, and you know, again, growing up. She's, she grew up here, so now she's grown up, and now she's involved with the Rotary Inns and the big events and all this stuff. Here she is, right here. Mark Butler's mom's in here someplace. Uh, this Jim Silvernail's uh, uh, Marilyn's mother uh, here. Uh, she's Alice Foster. They called her Peggy, um, and that's here. Some more pictures of them here. They're playing bridge. They, bridge was a big deal. Uh, a lot of, lot of bridge. Uh, who types a postcard? <laughs> that's what I want. Who types a postcard? But anyways, <laughs> that's the band shell. Uh, I, I, just, I just put it there so you can, who types a postcard? Anyway, okay, so Hollywood band shell and home building, kind of neat, played in there. Uh, here we are, Cub Scout, eight years old, 1963, 95, still not there. This is 2927 Madison Street, the furthest house west on Madison Street before 95. No 95, it was, there was uh, State Road 9, and it was being reconverted to become State Line 95. This car looks like a rocket ship, doesn't it? You should see the taillights, they come out like three feet, they got these big windows, it was really a cool car. Anyways, so we're, we're Cub Scouts. Here's why we, we did these things, the arrows, you know, you get your wolf and you get your bear, and it's probably a good thing for the future, you'll see. Um, here's my best friend, Paul Lang. Paul's here in the back with his brother, Ernie. We all kind of grew up here together. They went back up north for a while, came back down. And here we are. This is what's going to become I-95 behind us. This is Orange Brook over here with all the trees looking west. And uh, here we are back then, 1963. Here's a group of Motley characters, round up the usual suspects. You got uh, Kenny Lang here, you got Paul Lang here, and you got uh, Mad Dog Paul Lang, right, right Paul? And we got, uh, <laughs> we got Chris here, and there's Don Burgoyne, and Kenny Paul. Somebody said, what's in a bag? I said, I could tell you, but I'd have to kill you. I don't know what was in that bag, but probably you used to bring sweets and desserts and things like that, like we have in the back here, to the scout meetings, uh, and we'd have, you know, different things to eat, Kool-Aid and things like that. Uh, okay, became a scout. Here's when 95 came through, 1964, just to show you, and uh, it went from uh, then north to 84, so it was after 65, so we had that whole place for a long time. It's kind of neat. Uh, here's the, go back, okay, here you go. Okay, yeah, I got a lot to cover, so I got a long way to go and a short time to get there, so I'm trying to get through here. I don't want to keep you bored. <laughs> okay, this is the Hollywood Public Library. I used to spend a lot of time there because it was Air conditioned, and I'd go there as a little kid, ride my bike, and had a lot of fun. It was quiet. It was quiet there, and I could have my own space. I'd write some papers on John Kennedy and read about the rockets, and it was nice. This is over here, the library. It's funny we've come full circle. Now we're in a different library. Okay, uh, this is the Diplomat Hotel. 
Spent a lot of time there, a lot of time there. Used to ride my bike down at night time and hide it in the bushes and walk in and go in and bust the rich kids' parties, you know? We'd hang out, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> okay. Uh, had the hotel convention, diplomat, diplomat. Here's diplomat. They, I remember George, wasn't it George, wasn't he the guy, uh, the doorman, he wore a long tailed tuxedo, he was a black gentleman, and he'd always greet you and shake your hand with white gloves and hold the door for you. Even the little boy, he'd let me in, hi, how are you, nicest guy in the world, okay. And, and then, you know, the dip, well, here we are at the Sands of Hollywood Beach, 1964, so I'm nine years old, and that's when I started, you know, more snorkeling and diving, look at those shorts, huh, plaid swim trunks, kind of interesting. Looks like they took that picture through a mask, doesn't it? I don't know what they did. And the old rubber mask and the old snorkel off of Hollywood Beach. Here we are, right before 95 came through. Look, there's no cars back there. I'm throwing a ball, I'm playing catch 19, 1964. Just about. Jalousy windows. Yeah, jealousy windows. Good, good observation. Uh, no, no air conditioning there. Hot, hot. Uh, I played for the Church League in 1967. That's the only trophy I got. We didn't get a lot of trophies lavished on us when we were kids. Today they get all these giant edifices, you know. <laughs> so, you know. Um, now this was kind of neat. This is my, my grandfather's boathouse in the thousand block of North South Lake Drive, right across the street from Vic DiBianchi's house. Vic's still here, I think. He was. And uh, in any event, uh, that was, uh, he, he kept his, he'd take me there, my grandfather, when I was a little boy, and he'd take me down, and it, he didn't own the house, he had the boathouse, and, and they let him keep his boat there. And we'd go in there, it would be dark, it would be musky, there was no light switch, there were little catwalks on each side, he had spring lines to hold the boat so it wouldn't you know, go up and down in high tide and keep it in place. And he'd reach up with his hand and turn the light bulb to illuminate the inside. And then he'd open up that door, that garage door. Oh my God, it would flood with beautiful light from the lake. It's beautiful. And we get in that boat, and we just, you could smell the musk. We get in that boat. He had an old Chris Craft, and we go down to, to Biscayne Bay and all over. Nothing was here. You couldn't even get gasoline. You had to bring your gasoline with you, have, have enough of that to get back. It was a blast, but uh, this is no longer here. But what memories that is? Connie made that into a picture for me. It's hanging in our dining room, and, uh, or living room, I should say, at home. And uh, I know that when I was a little boy at Christmas time, we'd get in that boat and go down to what is now Three Islands, and we'd get Christmas trees. That's why I have the little piece of wood over there. Connie puts every year we get our Christmas tree. I put it there in memory of that. We get our take a saw, cut down a tree of our choice, kind of like Christmas vacation. Ta da! There's our tree. You know, we cut it down, put it in a boat, drive it back here, take it home. That'd be our Christmas tree. That's in the 1950s how we got our Christmas trees on the Spoil Islands off of Three Islands. Uh, here's the boat. That's the only picture I got. That's the boat right there, split windshield. You can see Chris on it, it's Chris Craft. A little light in the front. Um, there's Craig, there's Brad, there's me, and a little night urchins there. I don't know who this kid is, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> then we got a boat of our own. Nice boat. Boston Whalers, Connie and I, and our, our Boston Whalers Thor's Dream. Love that boat. We went all over with that boat. Lake Okeechobee, the Keys, Naples, just everywhere camping. We went out camping in the 10,000 Islands and had the most wonderful time, two, three nights out there. Hollywood Mall, who remembers that? Yeah, that's where we all hung out, right? 1960s, and inside, my friend Eddie Glancy used to be sell Allstate Insurance here. He's a dear friend of mine, he's still alive, Eddie. He's 93 years old now. And uh, we used to go in there, and, and they had Orange Julius down here. They had Woolworths. We could have, they had a little uh, you know, restaurant there. Bob's Sports Shop. Bob's Sports Shop, yeah. Bob's Sports Shop, you got it. Uh, all those places, man. It was a great time. In fact, Bob DeWeese, he had Bob's Sports Shop in the Hollywood Mall. And he also had one over on Young Circle. Exactly. You remember. Here, here's the bike I was telling you about. Uh, my little Stingray with the basket. And <laughs> nice bike, huh? <laughs> Had a lot of fun with that bike. Rode it all over town. Put a lot of things in that basket. Look at that banana seat. Isn't that something? That's something, huh? <laughs> we had these big handlebars. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Okay. All right. So here's the oranges again. Picking oranges. There's my dad. He'd come down to visit once in a while. He was, he was uh, pretty buffed. He was, he was a pretty tough guy. And uh, he, he went up to uh, Long Island and opened a flower shop. And uh, we stayed in touch. I need to get a sip of water here. Oh, oh, oh thank you, Kelly. That's very thoughtful of you. Thank you. Uh, 
I hope I'm not going too fast for you. I hope I'm not going too slow. I hope I'm not overwhelming you, but I was just trying to get through all this. So if you have anything, just wind me up and point me in the right direction here. <clears throat> so here it is in the 1960s. Uh, here we, Craig and I, this train here, used to take us up to Ocala to a little camp uh, for like the weekend or week. And here's Craig and I, I got a duffel bag. We're going up there in 64, I'm nine years old, to the camp with, uh, with him. Then we went to Camp Dixie. A lot of kids here in Hollywood went to Camp Dixie. And this was a great camp. It was founded, the co-founder of the Boy Scout Handbook, Pop Jamison, was involved in this. It was formed in 1914 up in the uh, Blue Ridge Mountains where Georgia and North Carolina come together. And uh, what a great time. We, this was the lake, the mountain lake. It's a couple thousand feet high. It's cold. Connie and I just went there last year to see the total eclipse. Welcome back with open arms. They cooked us breakfast. We had a great time. Went swimming in the lake. What a great place. We used to go canoeing, horseback riding. Uh, they had songs which sing out by the campfire. Uh, here, here I am back then, uh, some of the counselors, you know, just kind of awkward young kids trying to find their way. Uh, in the summertime, we, we, uh, we didn't have a lot of money, so the deal was I'd go up there and have to work. So I had to clean the, clean the stables for the horses and, you know, bale hay. But it was cool. Because they'd take us out afterwards, we'd have something to eat. Here's our cabin, the neat old cabins. Uh, this, this old road here is pretty neat. It was steep, you'd have to walk up this road. When it rained, it was real muddy, it was hard. Um, we had a great time up there. You have archery, we had riflery. These are targets up here. Here I am shooting at one. Uh, this, we had water skiing on Lake Raven. We'd camp out on these islands. Uh, these little boats probably overloaded, too many people on them, but what are you going to do back then? It didn't make any difference. Um, here are the horses I used to clean up after, but we'd go out in the, in the woods, in the mountains, and shower in waterfalls and camp out for two or three days and pick blueberries and catch trout. It's cool. And it rained. Look at that rain. It rained in Georgia, man. I'll tell you what. Nothing like it in the summertime. A lot of rain. We did skits. Uh, here's a dog we had, and I don't know what this is, something in the dark. Uh, we we uh, had different things we learned to do. We learned to work with our hands. Here I am making a skim board for the skinny water. We'd, we'd skim on it and, and slide on it and uh, painting it. Probably lead. Probably got lead poisoning now in that paint. <laughs> 1966. Here, we had lapidary. We, had, we used to cut and polish stones. This was a hunk of, hunk of gold stone. It was made by the monks out of copper and glass. And uh, you get, get a hunk of it, and you'd work on these, these little grinders, and you'd make it. This, I made this ring out of goldstone. You can see it's unfinished in the back here. It took many, many times because it always break. It was like glass, very fragile. Uh, here's a bongo I made up there. We made bongos then. And it was like they gave me a bag of wood. So what's this for? I said, go make a bongo. I said, what, are you crazy? And, and again, you had to take these rasps, and you had to like rasp it and then sand it and then stain it and furnish it and varnish it and do it like 20 times. And anyways, uh, it's still here, it still works pretty good too. Uh, long time ago, 1966. And you get these little awards for your archery and your rivalry and all those things. Give you a little self-confidence. Those are the biggest awards you got. This is a very small box. They're very tiny little awards. <laughs> and they give you a little kerchief with your little memories from Camp Dixie. And uh, here, here's the hairstyles and the clothes. 63, 4, 5, 6, uh, 8, you know. Going, going from uh, these little shirts into McNichol. This is McNichol now. You wear a coat and tie for your pictures. Uh, yeah, it was hot back then. Cut our hair down real short. I had hair. I was skinny. Amazing. Um, here we go. This is mom, the bouquet shop. They had a big orange bowl party at the flower shop. Everybody was there. They were kind of socialites to, to an extent, I guess. Um, Hollywood. How about this Hollywood Federal? 63 degrees. I always like to look at in the postcards what you see. Here's 63 degrees. Here's the Hollywood Federal building. This is Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. This is Moy's, this looking west, kind of northwest from Young Circle. Moy's restaurant, there, you can see the Buddha head right here in the light. They had a big old Buddha there. I mean, it was huge, and it was a great restaurant. we go there and eat, it was a wonderful restaurant. Uh, so we used to have retreats at St. John's, and I'd help load up the cooler. We'd go for the church, and we had a little thing about the theme to the church. We went up and loading up the cans in the old ice chest, and that's like 1969, I'm like 14. Um, we go to the South, South Pacific, remember that? Wasn't that great? Not there, gone, gone a long time, 1969. And uh, what a place that was, kind of like Maikai. You're thinking of Maikai in Fort Lauderdale still there. It's equivalent for down here. Uh, and uh, this is, this is uh, here I am. I've got velour pants on, the wide belt, and this is a silk shirt. There's my stepsister, Vicki, beautiful. She's a flight attendant. Lisa Watson, that's Jake Watson's wife there. That's Jake Watson, he was a municipal judge and a lawyer in town here. 
That's my dad. He looks like he's had too many to drink. Um, this is my stepmother. Same thing with her. Uh, there's Goodwill, and uh, I know Diane uh, used to live next door to them, and uh, there's Charlie Pukabakis who, uh, who married them. So we had a nice dinner that night. Uh, there's my grandmother at her 50th wedding anniversary, huh? We had go-karts, I had go-karts, I love my go-kart. Uh, back then there'd be nobody here, I'd ride it all over town. All over town, I'd pull into the gas station and they had a little rubber thing and bing, ding, ding. The guy would come out like in a uniform, I'd say, fill it up, you know. <laughs> he'd put like three cents in there, you know, I'd give him a nickel, keep the change, you know, <laughs> drive off with a go-kart. And he rode that all over town, I had so much fun with my go-kart. What a great thing that was. Mini bikes, loved mini bikes, had so much fun at nighttime running around. I remember I think Paul, were you on with me when Paul? Have you ever gone to mini bike at night? Yeah. yeah, what happened? What happened, Paul? A lot. You were crazy. Yeah, yeah, we were. We, we, had, we had dogs chasing us. Paul, I keep thinking I'd slow down. The dog almost catched him. I'd speed up again. You know, the dog come up, almost got speed up again. <laughs> we had a lot of fun. Okay, here's another one I made. I made this one here. I found that frame and put it together. You make things, you, you know, you, 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 know you, you learned how to make things, right? Here's a mail cart. I had a mail cart. I used to do wheelies with it. That was so much fun. Oh, it was great. We used to race them around town, ride those mail carts. Uh, here, here's Port Everglades, and, and this is kind of neat, because they're talking about these people here. I think they're going to see the Queen Elizabeth go to uh, China or something like that. And, and then, like, it got to China. This is like 1971, 1972. I did some research. It's, it burned and sunk in the harbor there. So they saw it leaving, Queen Elizabeth I, leaving Port Everglades. When I was a kid, I used to fish in these little inlets here. You, you could get in there. It wasn't all fenced off again. And I caught a flying fish one day. And I was resourceful. They had a payphone. Remember those things? And I had a dime. And I called down to the aquarium and said, hey, I've got this unusual fish. It had these big blue eyes and purple striped wings. And I said, you want it? They said, yeah. They came up in the station wagon with a, like an aquarium in the back with water sloshing everywhere. By the time they got there, it was dead. <laughs> so as they were leaving, I caught another one. What are the chances? And I gave it to them. They, said, you, they gave me like a lifetime admission. I didn't take advantage of it. I won a few times, but it's down there stuffed on a wall someplace, a flying Cunard or something. And uh, that was amazing. Uh, here's Hollywood Beach. Uh, no uh, no uh, theater under the stars. Uh, you can see just nothing developed down here. Um, now, we used to have trampolines. See the trampolines here? Where the arrow is? Look at that. And, and now the, the theater, Beach Theater and the Stars is here. And you can see all the seaweed. But we used to go on those trampolines and have a lot of fun. Of course, you know, products, liability, people getting hurt. That's probably came to the end of trampolines, you know. But anyway, so here's a, here's a flamingo pool. A lot of water in the basin here. You can see it's full, you, you know, and interesting. Um, Here's another one, Theater of the Stars. People thought it was so great. Yeah, okay, it was. Uh, my car was ripped off down here one night. That wasn't great. My 55 Chevy. I love my 55 Chevy. Here's my 55 Chevy. Uh, kind of a James Taylor wannabe. You know, had that hot little car. It was, uh, it was fast. That was, that was the fastest car I built that up. Here it is. How's that look? That was opalescent, pearlescent, white paint, and you could see the rainbow in it. It was a fast, fast car. Krager Mags, we had the 327 Corvette engine we put in that thing. We had the uh, Muncie M22 transmission. We had all kinds of uh, special uh, carburations and cams, and it was balanced and blueprinted. And it, it was a, we had a 456 Posi. It would go like 12 seconds and a quarter mile. See, I took off the front bumper, took out the back seat, took out the spare tire, lightened it up, and that car was so fast. We used to have a lot of time racing around Hollywood. I mean, I'm sorry, but that's what we did. You know, Corvettes and, and all kinds of cars. We had a lot of fun. So here's 1972. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, so here's uh, some of our friends and family uh, in front of the house on Madison Street. Uh, here we go. Here's Craig. Craig went to the to the uh, to the uh, Navy in the 60s. He's not too happy here. He looks a little pissed off, really. Uh, <laughs> with my brother Brad, my grandmother. Here I am in like a Nehru shirt. What a juxtaposition. Here I am like the young budding hippie kid with a guy in the military who doesn't want to be there. And uh, he's got a smile on his face here. We got him smiling. I took the picture and said, come on, man, smile, you know? He put one on. But uh, here's mom with him. And uh, he went off. This is Bill Buckles. Who knew Bill? You knew Bill, didn't you, Mike? Some of you knew Bill Buckles. And we used to play ball on the field next to my house in the 1960s. And uh, 
He, uh, he ended up getting killed. He went over there for three months, boom, dead. First guy I knew that was in a military killed. It was really ripped my heart out, you know. Uh, so that's Bill, you know, good old Bill, yeah. His father, uh, his stepfather owned Gene Sporting Center over here on Johnson Street. And uh, he's buried out here on uh, um, uh, 441 Taft Street in the Memorial in the uh, cemetery there. Okay, so this, I built this at McNichol Junior High School. They used to have shop. Probably, and we had shop. We used our hands and fingers. I built this from scratch, you know, in ninth grade. You know, it was pretty interesting. Got an A on it. I was real proud of it, but mom took me down. I got all this hardware done at Barnett's Hardware in Houndale. Wanted it to look real jazzy. This, and this, this, all this beautiful hardware. And oh man, had this little drop down lid so you could make like a bar in there and glasses. And I put Coca Cola's. This was like 50 years ago. And now, here it is today. We use it to store our, our little uh, whimsies for our little nutcrackers for Christmas we keep them in here it's in our house so it serves a good purpose but I love that wall bar um, here we are we took a trip to New York one time they kind of kidnapped me really Brad and Craig and back in the 60s here I am on his shoulders and I was probably 15 years old and we went up drove through the night they made me drive the car they were all partying their ass off and <laughs> we ended up in some little little southern town up in the Carolinas at this this memorial, I don't know, we just took a picture, it seemed like a good idea at the time. But uh, you could see, you know, Craig was, Craig was pretty tough. He was a pretty tough guy, yeah, he sure was. Uh, this is my car, my Grand Am, I love cars. Uh, 1973 Pontiac Grand Am. And uh, I drove that car coast to coast from here to Mexico, all the way up to Carolina, California coast to uh, Seattle, Washington, and back. And uh, that, was, that was a nice car, it was a pretty fast car. Uh, here we are up in, I think that's in uh, Provincetown, or that's in Famouth, Famouth on Cape Cod, drove up there one time. We had CB radios, they were a lot of fun. CB radios, we communicated on those. And then Grand Canyon, drove it out there. And the, you see this is a closed, skinny, I'm skinny, huh? Look how skinny I am there, geez. Uh, Mount, Rainier, Mount Rainier, 1975. I just bought that hat in Mexico, had fun with that. Here, I hear him in Yosemite, and here comes this bear. And I didn't know any better, I mean, and I had a bear patch from the Cub Scouts, remember? So, I mean, I got up next to that bear, and like, he, he's, I just bought some clams in Monterey, and I had some butter, and I was going to cook those clams, I was so hungry. And he stole my butter, the bear, he took my butter, he wanted no more than I did. I chased him out in the woods, and he turned, he was a mean bear, he, he turned me and started like growling at me, you know? <laughs> I'm like, out in the woods, it's dark! And I'm thinking, what, what are you doing, buddy? Are you crazy? You know, I, I just kind of backed off and went back. He, they came with like tranquilizer guns and cages and never could catch him. And the next night, and the next night, and then this guy, his, his wife told him, he had his cookies in a Tupperware container. They had a big RV, they had like a generator going, we had tents. And uh, the bear came and took the cookies. His wife said, George, get that Tupperware container from that bear. And so George was a little hand-packed, and George went to grab the Tupperware container from the bear, and it was like Karate Joe. You, all you saw was like these nails coming out, and just about missed him by about a fraction of an inch, and that guy almost had a heart attack. Anyways, I learned not to mess with bears. Uh, that was pretty close. That's way too close. I took that picture. I was two feet from that bear. I was stupid. Um, Okay, but that's what I was like, you know what I mean? What are you going to do? Okay, here we go. So Dad uh, let me go skiing with him. We went up to Jay Peak. We're up in the Troy, Vermont, 52 miles of trails. I never skied. I didn't know how to ski. He put me on skis and dropped me off at the top of this mountain. Look how far down it is. He said, well, you got to find your way down. And it was scary, but I learned how to ski. So that was up there. Uh, this is, he lived up in the Berkshires. These are waterfalls, frozen bash fish waterfalls. Beautiful to see frozen waterfalls hiking down to those. Oh, how nice that was. He had a nice house up there in the Berkshires. He had slot machines. We, we played those all the time. Uh, we got to uh, the uh, catamount. Here's his house on top of that. You could ski out of his house down to the bottom, come back to the top. Uh, so we learned how to make things. I made these, these whales in my house out of that. Uh, we're going to wind this up in a minute. Uh, this is the, uh, the whales up here in my house. I kind of like living a nautical vibe, a nautical theme. You know, live like you're passing that invisible boundary, right? So that's where, my, that's where I sit in my dining room. We got our, my dad says, oh, he's got a pool in his living room. Well, not really, but it's kind of like right out there, kind of fun. And uh, I enjoy seeing that. Um, my friend Don and I, this, this was my old dog, Sheba. And right here is a possum in a tree. And we used to go up and catch him. You catch them, catch them by the tail. If you hold them by the tail, they cannot come up on you. Their, their stomach isn't strong enough. And uh, I had to get it out of the tree because Sheba was going nuts. She was a beautiful dog. She was looking at him, and I put him on the, the fence and got, got him out of there. Uh, here we are diving. 
Dom was pretty fit, so was I. We used to take these tubes from the truck tires with laundry baskets and go offshore. And that's how we dove. We didn't have boats and we'd catch lobsters and all kinds of stuff. There's mom going to the Caribbean. Here I am back in the day after day in the water. Had fun there. Uh, went to the police academy. I was an outstanding graduate. November 8, 1974. Here we are. Look how, how young I was, huh? Boy, amazing. Uh, outstanding graduate. I was proud of that. I got there. Now, see, this is November 8th, okay? And look at this, November 18th, 1972. Well, I, I was a police cadet then, and Henry Menard went to the uh, Mayor's Jewelers in Hollywood Mall, and he was assassinated by two guys, uh, jo Joseph Greer and John Catlett. And uh, I just started working at the police department as a cadet. They put me in the detective bureau, and they said, answer the phone. I got a call, and the young girl said, I, I think I know who did it. And I actually got the, the tip that broke the case. It was her, her uncle, and she said, he's going up to Massachusetts. I thought this was important enough to go tell the commander. I told him, and sure enough, that's what, what uh, solved that case. They went up and caught these guys and uh, solved that murder. Uh, Byron Riley, Brian, Brian Riley, and uh, Philip Yorman, they hit a, a car over here in, uh, uh, off of uh, Lawn Acres. They were chasing a robber from the fashion center. And uh, I was working in ID Bureau then, and we were like the first unit on the scene, uh, these guys. <laughs> they were young, you know? I mean, young guys. You, you risk your life. So there's my dad, he's a character. I, give my, I used to say, Dad, I go to work with sunglasses and come home with flashlights or vice versa. We used to, every month we used to rotate. We rotated days, afternoons, evenings, every month it killed your circadian rhythm. And I, I went over saw him, he was down visiting, and he put, I gave him my glasses and my gun belt, I got my gun on and flashlight and hit my shirt. <laughs> I took a picture of him. Over, that's, a good, that's a good old house, uh, Diane. Um, that's our old squad seven in the 70s. And uh, here we are. This is the uh, suspected killer of the former police chief's mother-in-law. Uh, that's back then we used to carry 45 with bulletproof vests. It was, it was a tumultuous time. We got some nice awards. Uh, we got officer of the month for Kiwanis. I think it's nice they did that. They should still do things like that for the guys to recognize them for their service. Uh, and uh, that's Steve Davis. He's gone. Now it's Gil Frazier. That's Gary Hochberg. Uh, this is downtown Kiwanis Club. Uh, like that gun. That was a nice custom 45 with the big grips on it. Um, that's probably when I was pretty fit. Uh, some party, I don't know, you know what I was doing. I had my sunglasses on, got the cop glasses going. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a long time ago. And we got these commendations for arresting all these bad, bad guys. I was out of, the, out, out of the academy for a week. Look, November 15th, I'm going down to the, my first night, and I told this guy, Lloyd, I was working with, I said, hey, you know, there's some guys in the alley here. They don't look right. I think something's going on. He said, nah, we're going to the beach. I said, he, so he wanted to prove to me I was wrong. I insisted. We went back, ended up, they had stolen the car, they had guns, they were going to do a robbery. It was like a whole thing, a week. It was kind of neat. Uh, then we had... Uh, burglars and killers and robbers and all kinds of crazy stuff. This was Valentine's Day 1977 at MacArthur High School and that was a big deal. Uh, this guy uh, back then, I went in, you know, I went in, this guy killed a woman and uh, he found him there. He tried to kill me. There were like a hundred kids there uh, that came out of the uh, cafeteria. I asked the principal to, to lock the school down. He refused to do it and uh, the bell rang when you know it and he came in with a knife and I would have probably shot him, but the kids were there. I don't want to, you know, shoot through him and kill them. So yeah, he was he was a bad guy. This guy, real bad guy. Uh, there's another one. A couple a couple of guys shot somebody. I caught two guys with guns. A lot of stuff going. A lot of stuff going. I saw a lot. Had a great seven years. Loved every minute of it. Did a lot of good. Had a lot of fun. Uh, here's uh, my brother Craig. You can see he's one of those guys. Uh, here I am, there's Brad. Uh, this is David Clayton Thomas. I met him uh, coming back from Daytona on the CB radio, of all people. And we, we became quick friends, and, and he came to my house. I went to his hotel. He gave me a table at the, uh, his, his concert up at Burt Reynolds Dinner Theater. Nicest guy in the world. Really super nice guy. Um, here's the car I met him with. He had a black turbocharged Porsche, and I had a 74 Pontiac Grand Am. I upgraded to the white one. And, uh, we, uh, we came back from Daytona and made some really good time. Um, here's Connie and I uh, uh, on the tower getting married on Valentine's Day, another Valentine's Day memento, 1985, down at Holland Park. It's Reverend Long from St. John's Lutheran. And uh, 
That's Jimmy uh, Esposito and his wife Pam. He was a Miramar police officer. Uh, down on the beach, Sam took that picture. Here we are at uh, Shark Valley. We like nature. Here we are in uh, Flamingo. Uh, there's my friend Archie Kia Giannakis. He's a Hollywood guy. They have a reunion every so often for the retired guys, and I go back to that, and we always have fun. Uh, Here's, uh, here's my old law office on Hollywood Boulevard, which was ironic because it was right across the street from Mom's flower shop, which was so cool. So I'd look out there and see, see that. Uh, it's no longer there. Roger died. Jamie moved away, and I didn't need the office anymore, so I, I left it. Here's Connie and I at the reunion. Uh, you're beautiful, honey. Thank you. Where's that? Oh, the U.S. Supreme Court went up there. It's kind of like an Abbey Road picture with the, with the umbrella. That was fun. I uh, became president of the Broward County Bar Association. I thought that was kind of neat. And uh, th this was neat because we did a, a picture on both ends of the table. I thought that was kind of neat uh, with the reflections and everything there. So there were 24 board members there. And so it was a, a big deal at the time. I was honored by Broward College to give me this Hall of Distinction Award for a distinguished alumni. They had like a million graduates. and. Uh, I think 80 or so, 85, whatever, got this award. So I was really honored to receive that. Uh, Kelly was there for that. I'm a dear friend, Kelly Hancock. Uh, not a lot of nice people, Janet Reno, John Ashcroft. There's Rick Shaw. Remember Rick Shaw on the radio? Remember him? Uh, there's Ed McMahon. Remember him? Johnny Carson show? A great guy. Um, uh, here we are fishing in the glades. I traverse. Here we go back to uh, the Snake River, catching, catching uh, some trout out in Wyoming there. Uh, out in the 10,000 Islands, a big drum fish. That's a big snook. I was tired. We were up all night to catch that fish, but it was worth it right here in the New River. Uh, that's a big cobia. Love the fish. A big dolphin uh, offshore. Nice uh, grouper. All good eating fish. That's a barracuda. Not so good eating, but fun to catch out in Walker's K. We used to go there. Caught lots of lobsters. Love lobsters. There's a sheep, uh, sheep's head, delicious fish. Here we are, we went down to, you know, you can go any place from here. We got the best place in the world. We have the best transportation. We have the planes, the trains, the automobiles. This is a seaplane we took down to Fort Jefferson in the dry Tortugas. Connie and I went there and we had a blast. Um, down in Key West on a boat uh, over Sarasota. Now, going back to Queen Elizabeth. Here's Queen Elizabeth II. We were out there, remember the first one burned down? We're out there on January 1991, unbeknownst to some reporter snapped her picture at the end of the jetty out there as QE2 was leaving. Isn't that, isn't that ironic? Um, here we are at Niagara Falls. We've been fortunate to travel. We spent three days on this uh, destroyer, the USS Scott. We actually lived on a ship for three days, went out to sea, and uh, that was a fast vessel too. And uh, I was fishing off the stern here. It's kind of like McHale's Navy, remember that? <laughs> And uh, you can look at this fish tail, the rooster tail on this boat. This boat was powerful. It had nuclear weapons on it. And we were, went up for part of Navy's day, and they were decommissioning it, and we got the, the benefit of spending three days on it. What a wonderful opportunity. We went to the wardroom with the officers, and what a great time that was. And we went up to Lansom Meadows, uh, Newfoundland, put my dad's cremains up there in the, the uh, currents that went back to Greenland where the Vikings came from. Went out and explored some. Beautiful icebergs. Oh, what a time that was. Man, that was great. And uh, our favorite place is Log Cabin Cafe in Silvergate, Montana. What a place that is. Uh, wonderful place. And we love to watch wolves. Remember, we had a wolf pack. Uh, we're watching a Drew Peak pack here. This is up in uh, Yellowstone, the mountains in the background. And they flank each other with military precision. Here, here we are. You're watching like a pack that want to go here, want to go there. They, they don't want to get caught together. This is Yosemite. Look at that tree. What a place, that place. This is Yellowstone's in Montana, Wyoming. Yosemite's in California. People are getting confused. This is Sequoia. We walked back there. What a beautiful place that is. So getting back to Hollywood, uh, this is uh, the thaw in Yellowstone, Connie's birthday, Great Canyon. And here we are just finishing up. We used to play with these birds. Look at the one eating my hat. Connie's got one in a cradle in her arm down at Perry Jungle. We got that picture. Here we are in California. I mean, this is the most beautiful place in the world in California here. Julia Pfeiffer State Park. What a beautiful place. There's a waterfall on the other side that flows into the ocean. Um, Cambria Shores. And then here's, but the most beautiful place of all is Hollywood. I used to go to St. John's a lot, not so much anymore, but uh, what a great place that is. There's my dad. Here we are in our hot tub. We still became friends through all the years in my backyard. And this is a watercolor in our backyard. Getting back to the vibe of the colors and things. And mockingbirds, state bird. I just heard one yesterday, this morning, Connie saw an Oreo in our yard and heard it. What a beautiful thing to hear in the morning. And uh, this is our backyard. Here's a gray fox sleeping on our, our back deck. Uh, we live in like a wildlife sanctuary here. 
Uh, these are all the birds that were then and animals. Uh, I won't bore you with them. Uh, here's a five foot Nile monitor lizard that came to our front porch uh, and uh, just came to our porch out of nowhere. I was out of town. Connie took this picture. Uh, and they're reptilian. They're descendants of the Komodo dragon. They eat like, dogs and cats and <laughs> you know, everything else. But uh, they, we called them game patrol. They came out, put a cage out. They never came uh, and that never came back. Um, here's a lot of in things that are here now that weren't here before, uh, all these invasive species. Um, and, uh, you know, get to the top of the world. This is in Red Lodge, Montana. It's just like the top of the world, like getting back to the beginning of the guys coming out of the mountain and enjoy yourself. Um, you know, try to live the vibe, the tropical vibe, and the colors and the scenes. You live in the tropics, enjoy it. And dream as if you will live forever and uh, live as if you have only today. <laughs> Because you do. Thank you very much. So that's the end. So, there you go. You want to